Greetings, friends. As I think you've already gathered from the title, today we're going to talk about addressable LED strips and my favorite discrete logic chips. And to be more specific, we will learn to control the VS2812 at the hardware level and assemble the world's first running light on an addressable strip entirely using TTL type discrete logic chips without memory and processors. I will usefully spend time, which I have long searched for on the internet, but couldn't find a couple of projects already published in video articles, videos, or at least photos of the device. So, how did it even happen that I started this project? I was sitting over a sheet of paper, thinking about what cool thing I could make with discrete logic to show you. I wanted to challenge myself so that I could overcome it with pride later. And then I remembered Alex Gaver's video, where he showed the game, Pong in One Dimensional Space, implemented on an Arduino core strip. And I was like, aha, that's it. That's what I want to do with discrete logic. The project was divided into two parts. First, to create the display block and simulate the running light. And if you like it and there's interest, then continue and add a block with two buttons and game logic. So how do you control an addressable LED strip? Each LED in such a strip has four leads. Power plus minus, data input and output. In the strip, the output of the previous LED is connected to the input of the next one. Thus, to transmit data to all the LEDs, we use just one pin. And the data is sequentially passed through the LEDs in series. Since we don't have a separate clock pin, the data structure itself must combine both clocking and logic level. The LED developers came up with the following. If a signal is transmitted where the high logic level occupies one-third of the signal, then it's a zero. And if two-thirds of the signal, it's a one. The signal period remains unchanged. And since our LED is RGB, each channel has eight bits of color. In total, for one, let's say pixel, we need to transmit 24 cycles of zeros or ones. And the main challenge with these LEDs is to precisely maintain the timing of the level durations so that the strip works correctly. Since I don't plan to work with color in this project, my task is slightly simplified. I just need to create a setup that loads 24 ones for all the LEDs, and 24 zeros for one. Thus, one LED from the entire strip will light up completely white, while the others will not. Where do we start? Well, to begin with, we make a clock generator at 2 and 4 MHz, using Schmidt triggers. We talked about generators in this video, so I won't repeat myself now. This frequency of 2 and 4 MHz is not chosen by chance. We open the datasheet and see the typical data transfer rate is 800 kHz. We multiply by 3, since we have 3 cycles in, 1 period, and we get 2.4 MHz. We set up a counter and establish feedback through NAND, and an inverter for reset. This way, we will get a count up to 3, because 2 ones will give 0 at the output of 2 NAND, which will be inverted and reset the counter. The first, second, and third, third of the period. Now we draw the zero formation circuit. We need the output to be one in the first cycle, then two cycles of zero. Easy! We place a NOR at the output of the counter. In the first cycle, two zeros form a one at the output. Then the second and third cycles are zero. Now we draw the one formation circuit. We place an NOR, connecting it to the second bit of the counter and the input signal to determine zero or one. In the first and second cycles, the second bit of the counter will be zero, resulting in a one at the output, and in the third cycle, there will be two ones, resulting in a zero at the output. Now we just need to add a couple more inverters, and mix these signals so that either one or the other signal reaches the output. We drew it. This circuit generates a stream of zeros, and ones in the format of an addressable LED strip. Now we need to organize this stream into a structure. First, we'll set a divider to 24. The most convenient way is to set a divider to 2, for example, on a D flip-flop, and a divider to 12 on the IE4 chip. Together, this results in a divider of 24. And we divide by 24, I remind you, because 24 bits are contained in one chip, for setting the color. So, the reset signal divided by 24, is like a transition signal between the LEDs. Now, let's set up a counter that will count up to 128. The most convenient way is to use the IE19 counter chip, as it contains two 4-bit counters in one package. We feed the signal from the last bit into our data stream generator circuit. And what will we get? 128 times 24 bits on the data line will form a zero, or one depending on what we have at this input. 
Next, a reset signal will be formed on the line. This is important because it is at this moment that the LEDs will display what has been loaded into them. Without it, it won't work. The next task is to somehow create a running light. We make another square wave generator using Schmidt triggers, this time with a much lower frequency, 1 Hz. And we add a couple of IE17 counters. Why specifically them? Because they can count up or down, and the counting direction is set by an external signal. We cascade the counters, meaning we connect them in series. And now we feed the signal from the last bit to a D flip flop. It will remember that the counter has reached the end and will change the counting direction. Now our task is to compare the values in these and those counters. For this, we will leave the chips of exclusive or. The thing is, exclusive or is nothing more than a comparison operation. It outputs a 1, if the inputs are different, very convenient. We combine the output through diodes in a diode or circuit, invert it and apply it to the signal. That determines what will be in the data stream 0 or 1. By the way, if I had thought a little better, I could have used an LL3 instead of the LP5 chip, which includes OR. They have open collector outputs. It would have been possible to combine them without diodes. What is the result? The upper counters are like drawing counters. They set the signal that is actually loaded into the LEDs. The lower counters are the counters of the current position of the light. The value in the counters is constantly compared at the moment when all four counters have the same value. A logical zero will start loading at the data output. In all other cases, it will be a logical one, which is why we get a running light. The speed of the running light, as I think you guessed, depends on the frequency of the second generator. You can change the capacitance to decrease or increase the speed. Turn it on and enjoy. I decided to place the LED strip in a cable channel. It looks a bit more interesting this way. The power consumption of the circuit is about 500 milliamps. The reason is the 150 fifth series in the counters, which consume quite a bit. Therefore, it's important to include capacitors in the circuit to enhance stability. The final touch. I decided to make a linear power supply with a 785 as a stabilizer for this. Wonder. And a simple frame case. Later, another board with the game's logic will be added there. And on top, you can install acrylic glass. That's how the start of the project turned out. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, be sure to like and leave comments. Under the video, the more activity there is, the faster the next part will come out, where we will implement the logic of the game itself. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones, friends. And as always, this was Andre with you. Bye.